What's up? This is Jake from Hike734, and a question that I just got recently, and I've, I receive it a lot, is what camera setup do I use into the backcountry? What, what, you know, what camera body, what lenses, and all that kind of stuff. And when I first started out my project, I, I decided that that I wanted to do a lot of video blogging because that's kind of my background is, is video work. So so I I do videos first and then I take still photos. So so that in mind, I still don't think this is a bad choice. I just like to throw that in there. So um, the camera that I chose was the Canon 7D. Um, this uh, is a fantastic camera and I just really like it. The the advantages of getting the 7D over something like a 50D or a 60D or something like that is it shoots faster as far as, or it, it shoots higher burst rate, which for me wasn't as big of a deal. It might be if I start shooting more birds in flight kind of a thing, but a friend of mine who shoots a lot of action sports kind of a thing, having more frames per second is, is more important when it comes to shooting still images. But also the body is a little bit more durably built. It's a little bit better weather resistant and all that kind of stuff as opposed to like the 50D and, and those types of cameras. But uh, the reason why I went with the 7D as opposed to the 5D Mark II or something like that, which is a full frame camera, to get a little bit nerdy on you, is a full frame camera as opposed to a crop sensor, which is what this one is. Uh, essentially what it does is, is there's a lot of math involved, the way the light bends and everything. And um, whatever your lens length is or how much it zooms in an image is increased than what it would be on a full frame sensor. Uh, essentially, for example, a 5D Mark II is a full frame sensor and if you put a 200 millimeter lens on it, it'll be 200 millimeter or it'll zoom in so far. If you have this camera right here, you multiply that times 1.6. So it would be the same as having a 320 millimeter um, lens on the 5D Mark II. Not sure if that makes sense at all, but um, for those of you that care, it does that. And when you're when you're doing still photography, um, the the things that you you make up for would be you have better low light on the 5D Mark II, and it shoots um, at a higher megapixel range just because it's it's a larger sensor. So it ends up kind of being a, a wash as far as the benefit you gain from the 7D. However, when you're shooting video. I have, you, you get a longer lens, and when you're hiking out there, if you can get a longer lens for the same weight, that's a happy thing. So anyways, all that to say, 7D is what I ended up going with because I shoot video first, and that longer lens really would help me out. Before I get to the longer lens portion, though, whenever you're doing a lot of um, outdoor photography, um, you need to have a wide-angle lens. And um, for me, I ended up going with this Tokina lens, uh, T-O-K-I-N-A. It's Tokina, and it's a it's an 11 to 16. It's a 2.8 um, f-stop. It's a zoom lens, and, and the reason why I got a zoom lens is it just gives me more variety. Being 2.8, it's it's really nice, um, you know, as, as far as it gives you really shallow depth of field, opens up the aperture. Obviously, if you get on what's called a prime lens, where it's just like 50 millimeters, which is essentially not a zoom lens. Um, you can get that lower, but but for me, I, I wanted to have a zoom lens. I wanted to have something wide. There's no image stabilization on this, and when you're shooting video that's really wide, even handheld stuff, you really don't need much image stabilization. Um, and then the the yeah. So anyways, I like this one, 11 to 16, really good. If you're if you're using a full frame camera, um, the way that this multiplies out is essentially like a 17 to 24 or something along those lines. So, so kind of keep that in mind, but for, for crop sensor cameras, um, that's, that's kind of the, the way that it is. Um, for my long lens, I ended up splurging. Um, this, this would be the Canon 70 to 200. This is their 2.8. This is an L series lens. It's really heavy. It has image stabilization. The, it's an L series lens, so the image is great. I I really love this lens. As far as getting zoomed in really far, um, it doesn't it, it doesn't zoom as far as you would like, and um, that's where this guy comes in. This is the uh, this is a Canon. It's a two times extender, so basically it multiplies at times two. So this ends up becoming 140 to a 400 millimeter lens. Um, to geek out a little bit more for those that care, you actually do lose a couple of f stops, so um, or a couple stops. Um, so this is a 2.8 lens, just like that Takina lens. But when you add this, 
it ends up becoming a 5.6. Um, the, the lowest f-stop it can go is, is 5.6. So, um, so you do lose a little bit of low light by going to this. Obviously, if you're going to be a professional, per professional camera person shooting, you know, birds and, you know, stuff that's really far away, you're probably going to lug around a bigger lens and you're going to shoot full frame and all that kind of stuff. But if you're just going to be backpacking the park, um, this is awesome. This, this is definitely where I wanted to go. And of note is this, the image stabilization in this is super fantastic. And that's one of the reasons why I really, really loved it. Um, I tried a 70 to 200 without image stabilization, and or just shut it off on here, and you can't see, you, you can't make sense of anything. It's just so shaky. But I can actually handheld video with this, and it's pretty salvageable. In fact, most of my um, wildflowers and and that kind of stuff, I'm just hand holding it. So you can usually get pretty, pretty stable handheld video with this, which is. You know, really, when you when you're hiking along, I, I hike with my long lens on, because mountains don't move, right? So so as you're hiking along, you need to have your long lens on, and all of a sudden you see you know a bear walking on a hillside, you see a moose in some water, whatever. So you just need to be able to pull out your camera and start shooting. So so you always have to have your long lens on. Um, the one other thing that I do need to show you is this. my tripod um if you're going to be shooting waterfalls and that kind of stuff you need a tripod now this one is actually um a pretty bomber tripod it's a because it's, it's a video tripod so it has things like a ball head on it so i can you know re-level really easily i can just throw the the legs down and then go ahead and automatically level it and it has a video head on it so if you're going to go ahead and shoot uh if you're gonna shoot just still photography, this is overkill. But if you wanna do video and you wanna have those really smooth pans, you need a tripod of some sort. Uh, for the most part, you're probably fine with just getting like a Walmart you know, tripod, but it's not gonna last a super long time. So for me, I was banging it up quite a bit and this is awesome. This is a carbon fiber tripod. This is a Manfrotto tripod and it's fantastic. This thing weighs about uh, six pounds. Um, all together. So it's not light, but it definitely gives you awesome image quality. And really, when you compare what people used to shoot with, which with what we can shoot now, you can get amazing image quality for something like this. So um, then the last thing is, I just have um, a couple of, these are just, these aren't super expensive lenses. This is a Tiffin like starter kit. Um, but this, this has you know, a, a polarizing filter has a new, neutral density filter, um, which evenly decreases the light. And if you're shooting waterfalls, uh, you really should have a neutral density filter because you need to really slow down the shutter speed. And when I say shooting waterfalls, I mean still because, um, but even so, I mean, it, it's definitely, there's time and times when I've needed to put this thing on and, uh, but you, you definitely want to shoot a polarizing filter at times. So anyways, that's my kit. That's what I've been shooting when I go backpacking or hiking or whatever. So, like I said, um, I'll go ahead and do another video on showing you how I carry all this kind of stuff. But um, in the meantime, this is all all of what I have, and I'll go ahead and create kind of a little gear list below. So, um, and below meaning at my site at www.hike734.com, and uh, drop me a line. I love questions, and and you know, ask me what you want, and I'll go ahead and uh, it gives me great blog fodder to go ahead and uh, deliver more blogs to you guys.